All right, well, now that we sort of uh, have a, uh, a vague notion about these trig functions, let's see if we could actually figure out what the derivatives of these trigonometric functions are. Now, in fact, if you really wanted to figure out, for example, the derivative of the sine function, let's start with sine. What would you do? Well, if you want to rigorously discover and prove what the derivative of the sine function is, what would you have to do? Well, needless to say, what you'd have to do is you'd have to start back at the very beginning, return to the derivative of the definition, and as the limit as delta x goes to 0 of f of x plus delta x minus f of x all over delta x, and then you would insert for the function f sine of x. And so you'd see sine of x plus delta x minus sine of x all over delta x. You'd use the fact that sine of um, a sum of two angles, actually there's a formula, it's the sum formula for, for the sine function. And then you'd have to do some simplification and look at some complicated limits because you'll get an indeterminate form and look at that limit and figure it out. Okay, and then you get the answer. Instead of going through that process, which I don't think is particularly that intuitive or interesting, I thought better is to remember the fundamental fact that the derivative represents the slope of the tangent line to the function. So instead, let's do this pictorially and try to inspire and make an educated guess as to what we think the derivative of sine of x should be. And then we'll see that, in fact, that's what it really is. And the way we'll do that, again, is to look at a picture. Because, you know, it's more fun to look at pictures than to deal with a lot of formulas and stuff. So here, again, is the sine function. And what I'd like for us to do is take a look at what the slopes of the tangent lines are here. So if I put the tangent line right over here, let's say, you'll see that the tangent is positive, which means the, um, the slope, therefore, is positive. So the derivative is positive. So at this point, the derivative should be positive. Okay, now what happens as we move along? Well, the derivative is still positive, but notice that it's decreasing because, in fact, I'm leveling off. So they're still positive numbers, but they're getting smaller and smaller. And then what happens here? Well, here, the derivative is actually 0. The tangent line is horizontal at that point, so the derivative is 0. What happens when I keep continuing? When I continue onward, you see that now the slopes begin to take on negative values because I'm dipping down. And so now I'm negative. I'm more negative. So I'm getting further and further down in the negative numbers. And I keep getting down. And then right around here, notice I start to now still be negative, but I'm less negative, right? I'm moving towards 0. So I'm increasing, I'm increasing, I'm increasing. And then all of a sudden, whammo, I'm back level again. So the derivative there is 0. And then what happens after that point? Well, the tangents there now become, now become positive again, and they're positive. So what do I see? I see that the derivative is positive, then it becomes, it's positive, then it becomes 0. Then it becomes negative, then it starts to increase and become less negative, then it becomes zero again, and then it becomes positive. So we need a function that starts off positive, then goes down to zero, then keeps going down, but then comes up again and goes back to zero, and then keeps going up. What kind of function does that? Well, let's see if we can actually look at a, a graph of one. So let's see if we can look at a graph of one here. What would that look like? So I'm now going to plot the values of the slopes. I'm going to plot the values of the slopes. Let me draw in a little axis here. The values of the slopes. So here, I'm very positive. Here, I'm very positive. So let me put that positive number up here. And then what happens is I keep going. I'm still positive, but I'm getting smaller and smaller and smaller until I get to 0. So I'm still positive, but I'm getting smaller and smaller and smaller somehow until I get to 0. See, so now I'm at 0. Then what happens? Well, then I keep getting negative. I get more and more negative, more and more and more and more negative. So I'm going to get more and more and more and more and more and more and more negative. And then what happens? Well, then what happens is I actually um, get more and more and more negative. But then I start getting less and less and less and less negative. And then I come back up to here where the slope is 0 again. So now I have to be at that point, so the slope has to be 0. Remember, these are, the, these are the graphs of the numbers of the slopes. And then what happens after that? Well, now I'm positive again, so the slope is positive. I should be going up, and I'm increasing. So I guess something looks like that. So what kind of function has that basic shape of starting up and coming down, then coming way down, then coming back up again, and then repeating? Well, if you think about that, that turns out to be, at least in spirit, the cosine function. The cosine function starts up here, then comes down, and then goes up. And in fact, if you put that right underneath there, you can really see 
that business. In fact, let me do this for you right now live. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to start here, and I'm going to be calling off the values of the slope numbers. And you see if they correspond with the values of this function, where this function is plotted. So here it's very positive, and in fact turns out to be 1. So there it's 1. Now what happens? I'm still positive, but I'm decreasing. Still positive, but decreasing. Still positive, decreasing, decreasing, decreasing. Then I get to 0 right here. And notice right there, I'm at 0. Then what happens? Well, now I'm decreasing, I'm negative. So I should be negative, I'm negative. I'm negative, I'm decreasing, 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 decreasing until I get to here. So now I'm really negative. Slope there is negative 1. And now I'm still negative, but I begin to start going on and up, increasing. I'm still negative, but increasing. Still negative, but going up now until I get to here. That's 0, and that's at 0. And then what happens? Well, now I'm positive. Bing! I'm positive. And what happens? I keep increasing, 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 increasing until I get to here. So in fact, the derivative of sine, we can now guess, is cosine. And that guess turns out to be correct. And you can verify that going back to the definition of the derivative. So let me write that down for you. What we see is if f of x equals the sine of x, then uh, f prime of x equals the cosine of x. So there's the derivative of sine, which we hopefully get an intuitive feel for just by looking at the graphs and remembering that the derivative represents the slope and seeing how the slopes vary.